Growing up exploring Alaska's ever-changing oh, landscape you. inspires a lifetime of learning. That's why Alaska 529 is a proud okay, sponsor of the Alaska Sea Life Center and focused on helping families take small steps now for their child's future education. To learn about the Alaska 529 plan, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, carefully read the plan disclosure document available at alaska529plan.com. Alaska 529. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. Everyone gather round. It's a time of day for Virgin Small Fry School. We can hardly wait. Song. New ocean friends connect with old pals too. Really? Let's learn about the sea. There's wow, so good. <laughs> la la small fry. La la small fry. La. Go ahead and grab a seat. Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Virtual Small Fry School here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. My name is Rebecca and I'm so excited that you're here with us today. We will be hosting these live on Tuesday at 11 a.m. Alaska time. And if you have any questions, please text us at the number at the number in the description below. Those are the kitty wakes. They're having fun this morning. Um, now I want to acknowledge that I live and work on the traditional homeland of the Aleutic Sugpiak people. And I am wearing a mask today to keep my animal friends and my human friends safe. We are back at the aviary and last week we learned about puffins. We learned that they are uh, seabirds and they have feathers that they use to keep warm. They have wings to fly and to dive. They have eyes to see where their food is and also just to see in general and a bill to eat and webbed feet to walk. We made our own burrows where you put whatever you wanted in your perfect burrow. I love seeing all the creativity and all the different colors that you used. Thank you so much for sharing. Today, we are learning about what the puffins at the Alaska Sea Life Center like to eat. So let's learn from Dory to hear about her favorite foods. Dear Small Fry School friends, it was so nice meeting you. I am so lucky to have you all as friends. This week, I want to tell you about my favorite foods. Us puffins love eating fish, and lots of them. We dive deep down in the ocean, flapping our wings to chase our dinner. When we catch fish, we can hold many in our beaks and bring them back to our chicks. In my home at the Sea Life Center, I have so many different ways to find food. I get food when I stand on the scale. And this platform. I know my human friends love me when they give me a pile of krill to eat. Krill is my favorite snack. And when I eat fish, I swallow them in one big gulp. How do you find your food? What is your favorite thing to eat? Love, Dory the Tufted Puffin. Dory gets so many treats and yummy food. What body part does she use to eat her food? Her bill, yeah, which is her mouth. Now Dory and her friends have human friends here that prepare food for them and feed them. But the puffins out in the ocean find food themselves and don't have anyone to prepare food for them. Let's take a look at how Laura prepares food for the birds here in the aviary. 
This freezer holds food for all the animals at the Every Alaska Sea Life Center. Laura is getting frozen fish and treats for the birds. This fish is called hooligan, and it is a little too big for the birds, so Laura has to cut it into smaller pieces. Can we go to the office and see? This is one of their favorite snacks, along with krill. This fish is called herring, and because it was in the freezer, Laura puts the fish in cold water so that it thaws and is soft for the birds to eat. Herring is a smaller fish, and the birds can swallow it whole. Laura puts the fish in different containers. The blue bowls will be left on the aviary overnight so that if Dory and her friends get hungry at night, they have food to eat. The big silver bucket is food for the day. This is squid. Laura is removing the squid's pen, which is like a backbone or a spine. Squid is another favorite snack. The small fish is called silverside, and it is another favorite of the birds. Laura makes sure that they have all their favorite foods. Yeah. Yeah, on YouTube. It's on YouTube. It's for our preschool audience. Oh, we're, this video is talking about how um, they prepare food for the birds here. Mm -hmm. This is clam, and it is also a favorite. Laura no, has to the, cut it into the smaller vitamin, pieces the last. so that they can eat it. <laughs> it's an instinct. Laura is opening mussels so that the birds have an easier time getting their food. They have a lot of fun getting it out of the shell. All the birds get vitamins too. Laura puts it in the gills so that the birds oh, can take no. the vitamins <laughs> and be healthy. <laughs> Do you have someone at home that prepares food for you? Probably your adult. It's a lot of hard work, so make sure you say thank you. And I thought it was so cool that the birds also have to take vitamins, just like I take my vitamin every morning. And the birds get their vitamin during the first feed of the day. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Maybe I'll move out of the way a little so that they can see what that's like.
doesn't that look like so much fun? This is called a scale session, and they do this so that they know, uh, the avian staff know that the birds are healthy and strong. And it's actually happening right now with Laura over there who's um, weighing the birds and feeding them. So I'm gonna see if maybe we can zoom in a, a little closer. Might not be able to, but we can see it for a little bit. <laughs> And so what Laura is doing is someone else um, will be recording the numbers for her to know how much the birds weigh. Because it's super important that the birds are healthy and strong and that they are eating. And in this time, they also know if there are some birds that are not eating, and they also make note of that. So the birds are really excited right now because it's feeding time. So let's move on to our activity. Um, and we're going to need uh, a plastic knife, a cutting board, Swedish fish, or a banana. So um, this is my cutting board. I have a plastic knife. If you don't have Swedish fish, um, you're going to use a banana or anything else you have at home. I'm going to need three. So we are going to pretend we are caretakers for the day and we're gonna prepare food for Dory and her friends. Sorry friends, it looks like it, um, it has frozen, so we're gonna try to get it back. Oh, here we are. So if you have a banana, you will need three equal parts. So we're going to um, cut it here to make one part and then over on this side to make three other parts. And if you have any questions, please feel free to text them in and uh, Shauna will ask me. Rebecca, I have a question from mm -hmm. Naomi. She wants to know how the birds know when it's time to get fed. Oh, that's a great question. How do they know? Well, when um, the caretakers come out in the morning, they are very much used to in the morning when they see Laura or um, the other people that work with them, they know that it's time to eat. They also, when they see the bucket, it's also a big sign for them that says food is coming. Yeah, so with our one fish, I have colorful fish today. We are going to just cut it right down the middle in half, okay? So we're gonna cut this fish. Oh, this one's a little hard. <laughs> it's a little cold today. <laughs> Rebecca, how yeah. many fish can a puffin hold in its mouth? Oh my goodness. So they can hold many, up to like 60 fish. But the bird that we saw um, holding uh, a lot of fish in its mouth in the video, they had maybe 15. That's a lot of fish. You're going to do the same for your banana. You can peel it. I won't peel mine, but you just want to cut it in half. Now this next fish, some of the fish as we saw in the video are a little too big. So we have to cut them a little more. So this one, we're going to cut, um, we're going to make three pieces. So we cut, cut here on the front. Oh, 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 oh my gosh. And then we're going to cut a little closer down here. So, Rebecca, mm -hmm. how come there's so much food in the freezer at the Sea Life Center? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of food in there because that freezer has food for all the animals here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. Mm -hmm. So we made three parts here. And this one, we're gonna make four. So you can do the same with your banana. You wanna cut it in half and then make three parts. And with this one, we'll make four. Well, so we'll cut it three times. Mm, let's see, we can cut the, the tail, the fin back here.
And so some of the fish, as I said, are a little big, and it's um, to make it easier on the birds to eat, they have to cut them a little more. All the snacks that they get, all the treats, those all have to be um, in smaller pieces because it's just a little snack. Rebecca, mm -hmm. is there a way for Dory's human friends to tell which one she is compared to all the other puffins? Yeah, so they do, um, they get to know them and their personalities, but on their legs, all the birds have bands on them and they're different colors. And sometimes they have like, for example, let's say a red band and a green band together on their, um, on their feet. And that tells their caretakers that Let's say, for example, that story, those, those are not Dory's colors, but maybe that's Nemo or that's Rain or someone else. But those colors are really important. But like I said, this staff works really close with um, the birds here in the aviary, and so they get to know them really, really well. Because the birds have a personality too. Oh, well, this works a lot better. Perfect. <laughs> oh, my hands are cold. So we have our one, two, three, four pieces. One, two, three. And then our two pieces of fish. And this is how we prepare food for, um, or how they prepare food for the, for the animals. But I'm going to eat these fish because we can't give these fish to um, Dory and her friends. I'm also going to eat the banana. Do you have any other questions? Rebecca, mm -hmm. why does Dory have yellow feathers behind her eyes? Oh, <laughs> um, so I'm going to uh, uh, switch over to the main camera so that you can see what's going on behind me. But Dory has those yellow uh, feathers behind her eyes, all the tufted puffins do because that is how they attract a, a mate, a partner, so another tufted puffin to have babies with. That's why they have them. They're really pretty. Rebecca, Elijah wants to know who gets to name the fish. Oh. Or the birds. The birds. Sorry, the birds. <laughs> who gets to name the birds? The staff do. Um, yeah, the staff get to name the birds, and each year there's a theme uh, for the birds, so sometimes it's fruits and vegetables, other times it's, I don't know, glaciers. And so the animals um, here at the Alaska Sea Life Center have, um, are named after um, things that we have here every day, that we see every day, and there's a theme every year. So I don't know what the theme will be this year. It's a surprise. And so back here, um, I asked Laura how the birds, or like when the scale session is done, and she said, when the birds stop coming. So when the birds stop going to her for food, that's when they're full and they're not hungry anymore. And so the scale session is done. And Laura goes to the back and cleans things. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? OK. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and I also want to thank Alaska 529 for their continued support of Small Fry School. And can we just say thank you to the Puffin story and her friends on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Thank you. And I'm going to leave you with story time. Today we have the beak book. And you're going to learn about how different birds use uh, their beaks to get different food. And I will see you oh, next week. We are going to learn about how puffins communicate and talk to each other. And we're also going to see some of the other birds that we have here in the aviary. So I'll see you next week at 11. Bye. The Beak Book by Robin Page. That's awesome. Oh, I'm going to turn this off. Bird beaks come in many different colors shapes, and sizes. From the time they are born, birds use their beaks, sometimes called bills, in many unusual and amazing ways.
This beak is for straining. The duck's soft, flat bill filters seeds, plants, insects, and small animals from the muddy bottom of a pond or river. This beak is for sniffing. The kiwi's nostrils are located at the end of its long beak. This allows it to sniff out earthworms and other underground snacks. This beak is for tossing. The cormorant dives and snacks a fish with its hooked beak. Then the bird comes to the surface and flips its prey into its mouth. This beak is for crushing. The shoebill stork's large, heavy beak is perfect for crushing lungfish, catfish, and the occasional lizard or baby crocodile. This beak is for cooling. The toucan's large beak radiates heat and cools the bird on hot days. This beak is for filtering. The flamingo turns its beak upside down to filter algae, insects, and shrimp from the water. This beak is for snapping. As it slashes its spoon-shaped beak back and forth in shallow water, the spoonbill snaps up any prey it touches. This beak is for stitching. The mother, Taylor Bird, uses her beak to sew a nest for her chicks. She stitches leaves together with spiderweb silk forming a cozy nest. This beak is for prying. The crossbill uses its unusual beak to pry open a pine cone and eat the seeds inside. This beak is for stabbing. With a quick thrust of its deadly beak, the heron stabs a fish, frog, or other small animal. This beak is for ripping. The eagle has a powerful hooked beak for ripping its prey into bite-sized pieces. This beak is for probing. With its slender curved beak, the ibis probes sandy shorelines and marsh grasses in search of prey. This beak is for skimming. Flying just above the surface, the skimmer dips the lower half of its beak into the water to snatch a fish. This beak is for plucking. The flightless takahe plucks leaves and grasses with its short, stout beak. This beak is for sipping. The hummingbird hovers in midair, sipping nectar with its long, thin beak. This beak is for climbing. The macaw uses its hooked beak to grasp branches as it climbs a tree. This beak is for battling. Male hornbills use their impressive beaks in mating battles with other males. This beak is for drilling. The beak of a woodpecker has a sharp tip that can easily drill into a tree trunk to find the insects hiding beneath the bark. 
this beak is for scooping. Using the expandable pouch that is part of its beak, the pelican scoops up a fish. This beak is for shredding. A vulture's hooked beak is the perfect tool for tearing into a dead animal, the bird's favorite food. This beak is for clutching. The puffin uses its flexible hinged beak and the sharp spines that line its mouth to clutch several fish at the same time. And this beak is for tap, tap, tapping. And breaking out of an egg. Many baby birds use a special egg tooth attached to their beak to break out of their egg. After a while, the egg tooth falls off. The end.